as you walk into Citizens Bank Park from the outfield gates, you are confronted with the Phillies Wall of Fame. This is where the Phillies place a plaque for those players who are remembered by the fans as playing well with the Phillies. And like other teams, the Phillies have a practice of retiring the uniform numbers of their superstars. Players who played for a significantly long period with the team and who contributed to Phillies history. On either side of the Wall of Fame, you will see two giant peaks. These are for two superstars. One who played before they placed numbers on the backs of uniforms, and one who wore so many different numbers when he played with the Phillies that the team didn't know which one to retire in his honor. Those are Grover, Cleveland, Alexander, and Chuck Klein. But what if I told you that there is a superstar who outshines Chuck Klein in almost every offensive category, who is still in the top two or three in several Phillies offensive categories, and number one in one of them, and who also played at a time before players wore numbers. Yet despite for having played well over a decade for the Phillies and having dominated so many Phillies offensive categories over most of the team's history, the Phillies have not honored him in the same way that they have honored Alexander and Klein. This player made it to the Hall of Fame long before Chuck Klein did, yet the Phillies still have not retired a P for him. I'm going to make the case for why the Phillies need to retire a P for Ed Delahanty. Welcome to Philadelphia Baseball History. On this channel, we talk about the history of baseball from the A's to the Phillies to the 19th century. And sometimes we talk about contemporary baseball issues. So if you love baseball, and if you love Philadelphia, stick around and subscribe to our channel. How do you show your home team pride? With mugs, t-shirts, masks, phone cases, tote bags, and so much more. Check out tpublic.com and search for Philadelphia baseball history. Ed Delhanty was born in Cleveland, Ohio, to Irish immigrants in 1867. While his father worked odd jobs to make money for the family, his mother turned the family home into a boarding house. To escape the craziness of his family home, Ed, who was the oldest of the Delhanty children to survive past infancy, would take his brothers and they would go play baseball. All the Delhanty boys had talent. In fact, Five of the Delahanty brothers made it to the major leagues. Ed, impressed with his hitting prowess, and started playing with the semi-pro Ohio State League. He eventually played minor league ball out of Wheeling, West Virginia, where he caught the eye of the Philadelphia Phillies. The Phillies had just lost a young superstar whom they thought was going to be the future of the team. That was Charlie Ferguson, who initially made a name for himself as a pitcher. But even as a pitcher, he led the Phillies offensively. This was to the point where manager Harry Wright was playing Ferguson in the field on the days that he wasn't pitching. Wright had planned to make Ferguson his regular second baseman in the 1887 season. But alas, at age 25, Ferguson died of typhoid. This left the Phillies with a big hole in their roster. They had hoped that the hard-hitting Delahanty who was 19 at the time, could fill the shoes of Charlie Ferguson. Now it took a while for Delahanty to get his footing. His 1888 and 1889 seasons were not that impressive. In 1890, when a group of players started a third league, in order to fight the exploitation of the players by the owners, Delahanty jumped ship and played for the Cleveland Infants of the Players League. But that league was short-lived folding after one season. And with the reserve clause, the Phillies still own Delahanty's contract. So Delahanty resumed playing for the Phillies in 1891. And that is when his career started to take off. Mostly playing in left field 
Delahanty's average started to climb, but he was also providing power as well as speed. In a six-year period between 1894 and 1899, Delahanty hit over 400 three times, and once during that period, he hit 397. In 1894, Delahanty joined Sam Thompson and Sliding Billy Hamilton for the only outfield in Major League history where all three starters hit over 400. In fact, Tuck Turner, an outfielder who came off the bench for the Phillies, had 347 at-bats that season and also hit over 400. All three Phillies starting outfielders that season were elected to the Baseball Hall of Fame. The 1894 Phillies is the only team where all of its starting outfielders were enshrined in the Hall of Fame. In his 13 seasons with the Phillies, Delahanty led the major leagues in hits once, in batting average once, in doubles four times, in triples once, in home runs twice, in RBIs three times, and in stolen bases once. Delahanty played alongside such Hall of Famers as Hamilton and Thompson, as well as Nap Lajway and Elmer Flick. Delahanty saw the formation of the American League. Many of the American League teams lured the best players from the National League by ignoring the reserve clause and offering higher salaries. He saw many of his teammates jump to the American League in 1901, such as Lajaway and Flick. So, after the 1901 season, Delahanty looked to increase his salary by signing with the Washington Senators of the American League. And in 1902, Delahanty became the first player to win the batting title in both the National and American Leagues. Now most of us remember Ed Delahanty because of the sad and mysterious way he died in the Niagara River in 1903. And I've done a whole video on that tragic incident, so I won't repeat it here. There will be a link if you want to learn more about it in the description box below. The point is that when he left the Phillies after the 1901 season, he led the team in almost every major offensive category, and he remained the leader in most of those categories until Richie Ashburn came along in the 1950s, or in some cases until Mike Schmidt came along in the 1980s, or in a few cases until Jimmy Rollins came along in the 2000s. When he left the Phillies, he was tops in hits with 2,214, a record that stood until Richie Ashburn broke it in 1959. He was tops in doubles, which was a record until Jimmy Rollins broke it in 2013. He was tops in runs scored and total bases until Mike Schmidt broke those records in the 1980s. He was tops in at-bats and plate appearances until Richie Ashburn broke those records in the 1950s. He was tops in games played until Del Ennis broke that record in the 1950s. When Delahanty left the team after the 1901 season, he was second in all-time home runs. And that was in the dead ball era. And to this day, Ed Delahanty remains the all-time Phillies leader in triples. Ed Delahanty is still second in offensive war, batting average, singles, doubles, RBIs, and runs created. He's still third in overall war, stolen bases, total bases, extra base hits, and being hit by a pitch. Delahanty is still fourth in all-time Phillies hits and fifth in at-bats, plate appearances, on-base percentage, and OPS. And since Chuck Klein has been honored with a retired P, let's compare Ed Delahanty's Philly stats with those of Klein. And make no mistake, I'm not downplaying Klein or saying that Klein doesn't deserve to have a retired P. What I'm saying is that if Chuck Klein was honored with a retired P, Delahanty, who beats Klein in numerous offensive categories, should be honored with a retired P as well. Delahanty's war is third overall with the Phillies. Klein's is ninth. Delahanty's offensive war is second. Klein's is ninth. Delahanty's batting average is second. Klein's is seventh. Delahanty's on-base percentage is fifth. 
declines is 12th. Delahanty is 8th in games played. Klein is 15th. Delahanty is 5th in at-bats and plate appearances. Klein is 14th and 17th respectively. Delahanty is 2nd in runs. Klein is 5th. Delahanty is 4th in hits. Klein is 7th. Delahanty is 3rd in total bases. Klein is 6th. Delahanty is 2nd in doubles. Klein is 7th. Delahanty is 1st in triples. Klein is 11th. Delahanty is 2nd in RBIs. Klein is 5th. Delahanty is 9th in walks. Klein is 23rd. Delahanty is 3rd in stolen bases. Chuck Klein is 49th. Delahanty is 2nd in singles. Klein is 11th. Delahanty is 2nd in runs created. Klein is 5th. Delahanty is 3rd in extra base hits. Klein is 5th. Chuck Klein is only ahead of Ed Delahanty in three categories, home runs, slugging percentage, and OPS. But Ed Delahanty played during the dead ball era. Nonetheless, he was the first Philly to hit four home runs in one game. Klein was the second. Delahanty's achievement is all the more impressive because it was in the dead ball era and because those home runs were all inside the park home runs. Given Ed Delahanty's longevity with the Phillies, that he contributed so much to Phillies history, that he's still in the top three in 12 Phillies offensive categories, that he was tops in many of the Phillies offensive categories until the 1950s, the 1980s, or the 2000s, and that he still leads the team in triples, it is well past the time for the Phillies to honor Ed Delahanty in the same way that they honored Grover Cleveland Alexander and Chuck Klein. And that is with a retired P. For a team that prides itself on its history, this is a recognition that is well overdue. Now it's your turn. Do you agree that the Phillies need to retire a P to honor Ed Delahanty? Let me know in the comments below. Give us a like, tell your friends about us, and don't forget to subscribe. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. If you have any ideas for topics that we can cover in the future, please let us know in the comments below. If you would like to see more of these videos, please consider becoming a patron through Patreon. Again, we'll have a link in the description box below.